Well, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, we're gonna to go look at a mine that I haven't been to in quite a few years. We decided to get out of the house and explore this mine, but I'm not gonna tell you where it's at. So the reason I'm not gonna tell you exactly where this mine is, we haven't been up to it yet, but if it's still open and the BLM hasn't barred it off, I don't want to get it too much publicity and get people snooping around it and possibly get it barred off if it's not already barred off already. I will say it's east of Baker out in the Virtue District. It's an old mine. It's, um, I don't exactly know the name of this one. When I get back, I'll probably look it up. But we're going to hike up here now. Uh, decided to get out of the house this afternoon and go look at something besides the TV today. So we're going to hike up here and see if uh, any of these old adits are still open. It's been about at least 12, if not 14 to 15 years since I've been in them. So hopefully uh, they're still open and we can do a little exploring today. Tailing pile. It's been quite a while since I've been up here. This first one appears that this is probably a vertical shaft or an incline. It's collapsed in now. Yeah, you can still see a little bit of timbering down there. Yeah, that one's pretty much collapsed. Looks like there might have been a second one right here. Looks like there might be a coyote den right here. Coyotes have been digging for something there. Well, let's go find one of these other ones that used to be open. So as we're walking along, there's little potholes all over this hillside where they did lots of test holes. These things, when you're walking through snow, can be real ankle twisters. Right over there is the tailing pile we're heading towards. I don't know if it's this one that I ventured in before or the one below it. We'll, we'll soon find out. Coming up here, I'm seeing a lot of tracks going in here, so this may still be open and may be housing a critter or two. Making it, buddy? Yep. Oh, this does not look promising. Last time I was here, this is quite a bit more open than this. Definitely a critter been staying in here. Well, that's a bummer. Daddy, can we go in there? No, not without a lot of digging, we can't go in there. So what I'm gonna do here is show you some pictures of last time I was in here. I think I still have these on my hard drive, so here's some pictures of what this looked like when we went in there before. We may come back and visit this again and bring a couple shovels and dig this out enough to get into it. But it is still a little bit open. Seeing anything? See the quartz vein right there, what's left of it. I'm still not sure that's the one I ventured into. It doesn't have a huge tailing pile. I'd say it goes back in from this waste rock pile. Maybe. 250, 300 feet. I almost think this was the spot with the the attic going back in there and it's been covered up. I could be wrong. This does have a pretty good 
shaft here collapsed in now, but you can see the old hoisting uh, bolts or where the hoist had been mounted. So this may have just been notched out for the, uh, the hoist room. I'm gonna have to look and see what mine this was. You can see the pipe going down in. Really good place to stay away from down there. That, you know, I'm going off a 15 year old memory and I can barely remember what I did yesterday, but that, that little adit we were just at up there, it looks like it's going the wrong way from what I remember because the one I remember went through this hill and come out on the other side. So I don't know if I'm in the right spot. We may have to go look around some more. Yep, you sure did find a pipe. This has got a pretty good tailing pile on it. It's quite a, for a small operation, it's quite a bit of working. Well, we're gonna snoop around here some more. We may go looking for this place I took pictures before and see if we can find it because this doesn't look quite right. Let's go see what we can find. So the ones we just looked at wind up not being the ones that I was looking for because the one I was looking for actually goes through this hillside and comes out on the other side. So we're going to go do a little bit more exploring. I don't know if we're going to find it today or not or whether we just went for a little joy ride, which is okay too. But we're going to go do a little bit more exploring and see what we can find. Jalopy down there in the bottom of the draw that's been sitting there for a long time. pieces of history. So we're looking at this uh, old sandstone that people have carved their names in for quite a while. There's one April 4th, 1893. My dad showed this to me when he was trapping way back when. So since the gold mine uh, exploration didn't work out real well, and we never could find that um, that old adit that I'd been back in, I'm going to have to go back and look at the old pictures and figure out where the heck that was. We decided to look at uh, a spot my dad took me to back when he was trapping over 40 years ago, uh, where people have been carving their names for a long time. A lot of those names I think have, that I saw as a kid may have been eroded off or People have carved over the top of them, but there's still some pretty old uh, names carved in that, uh, that sandstone. And on the way out, I decided to bring, uh, bring the boy by and see one of only two commercial coal mines that operated in Baker County. Now, it's not a very big operation, but they did mine this and send it out. Um, I think they sent like three or four ore cars worth of material out full of uh, coal. This is the lowest grade coal, lignite coal. So it's not real um, in high demand. 
And I've walked around here before a long time ago, back when I was in high school. That's the last time I've been here. And I don't remember actually seeing any coal out and about anywhere. But supposedly these, this uh, vertical shaft we're about to look at was a coal mine. And there's supposedly, I don't know where they are. Well, we may have to come back later and explore this a little further. Back in high school, you know, I had a pretty short attention span. But there's supposedly two uh, inclined shafts out here somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where they're, they're at. I've looked on Google Earth before trying to find them. I never did really see a spot where they might be. But let's go look at this. Last time I was here, it had some garbage thrown down in it. Uh, I don't know if it's still that way, but let's go take a look. So originally, I guess this went down about 90 feet. Last time I was here, it had enough trash in it. It was probably only down... I'm guessing 50, 60 feet. As you can see, there's not a huge waste rock pile. And if it was cold, most of it probably got hauled off. But let's take a quick look. I'd say that goes down 30, maybe 40 feet. Got a lot of garbage down in there. Definitely wouldn't have wanted to fall down in there. It'd be extremely hard to climb out. You can see an opening over there on the left side that goes down past all that garbage. So definitely wouldn't want to go dinking around down in there. And it looks like from the black on the sides, periodically it's been burnt. All that garbage has been burnt. As you can tell, it almost looks like they dug down through just limestone and maybe some sandstone there. So I don't know how they knew there was coal there because out here on the surface, you know, right now it's pretty hard to tell because there's snow, but Look, yep, an old sign. But I've never seen any indication of coal up here. And this is on the far end of Keating Valley area, east of Baker. And evidently my my grandpa used to ranch and farm not far from here. He'd always talk about going up to the uh, the coal field or coal mine. I don't remember exactly the terminology, but you can see they had some, some kind of building here at one time. Some bricks laying out there. Old four-cylinder engine. No clue what that's from. We may have to come back out here when the snow's melted off and see if we can find any indication of coal out here. I mean, most of what I see out here is mainly basalt. The reports say there they did mine some out here and evidently this extends to a couple sections this uh, low grade vein that goes out through here. We'll have to come back when the weather's a little better and we can actually see what's on the ground. Okay, so the outro didn't get recorded out there. I think I forgot to hit the record button or the SD card messed up. I don't know what happened. But this gives me a good chance to explain a couple things. One, that mine we were looking at was not the mine I thought it was. I came back and looked at some old uh, notes I'd kept on mines and the pictures. And I'm like, we were at the wrong mine altogether. The mine we were looking for is about three or four miles away. So one of these days we're going to go back and actually explore that mine once we, uh, once I think the snow is going to have to melt off just a little bit to get to the mine I thought I was going to. So one of these days we'll go back and explore that mine. And I'm still not going to tell you exactly where it's at because I don't want it barred off and I'm pretty sure it's still open. Anyway, uh, on to the next thing. It gave us a good chance to explore some other areas like that sandstone where people have carved their names and dates in there. The oldest date we found, which I thought I had on camera, but I can't find it, uh, I think was 1853, which for this area is pretty old considering that it really wasn't inhabited uh, too much by white people until, you know, in the 1860s. 1862 was when, was when gold was discovered and it really started getting some population built. The Oregon Trail passed right past there, about two miles away. But again, there wasn't a lot of population here until the 1860s. 
uh, is when things started to take off in this area. And it's kind of funny, this area, by 1900 had, the whole county had roughly 15 to 16,000 people. And this county today has 15 or 16,000 people. So after 1900, Baker and the entire county really didn't grow much. It's been the same for over 100 years now, which is, for those of us who grew up here, we kind of like it that way. Anyway, it gave us a good chance to go look at that. Um, I think I was about six to eight when my dad showed that to me, my boy's six. Um, it's been a long, long time. It's been over 30 years ago since I've been to that spot. So it was fun to go show it to him. And uh, while I was out there, I kind of felt guilty because it dawned on me I hadn't shown my older two kids that spot. So we're all going to have to go out there one of these days and uh, look at that. So I show it to them too, so uh, they know where it's at. But that coal mine out there uh, is pretty interesting. And looking at the video, I said in the video it's like 40 feet down to the trash. I think it's probably more like 25 feet. When you're standing next to the edge like that, it feels like it's a lot further down. I think it's actually about 25 feet down to that trash level. I think the shaft itself goes down to about 90 feet. And they were just digging through that material to get down to the seam. I think the seam starts somewhere else and comes down at about a 40 degree angle. And they just dug down to meet it. And then they tunneled off to the sides. From my understanding, there's very little documentation on that mine. What little there is, that's what it indicates, is they dug the shaft down and then tunneled off to the sides. And I mentioned that they hauled off three or four ore carts. That's actually train cars full of um, ore from there to be sold. I, they may have just sold it locally, but that's about equivalent to what uh, they hauled out was three or four train cars. Now, not like the modern day train cars. They're, they would have been smaller, but still... A fair amount of coal came out of that, uh, at least for this area, uh, to be sold. And evidently, it didn't turn out so great because they didn't continue production. There's two of those coal mines in Baker County. One of these days, we'll go look at the other one. Neither one of them have a ton of documentation on them, but uh, we'll go through and look at them, see if we can actually find the coal seams that they were after. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of an interesting bit of history because Evidently, those coal seams pop out, pop up out there somewhere because my grandpa used to talk about them, and he kind of, I'm trying to figure out the years he would have been there, probably the 1920s and 30s. It was when he would, he would have been out in that area, maybe up in the 40s, 50s. He owned land out there clear up through the probably 1970s before he sold it. Uh, so anyway. He knew where those were, so evidently they pop up somewhere out there. So we're going to go investigate that and see if we can find out where the heck they are and see um, see if we can find out what quality of coal that is. Obviously, it's a pretty small vein. But anyway, the other thing I want to mention is the video we posted about a week ago about these little fire starters. And I posted a link in the description uh, an Amazon affiliate link. I want to thank everybody so much for using those Amazon affiliate links. When we post those, and you don't have to buy the item that uh, we're uh, putting in the video description. If you buy anything after you click that link, if you're just doing your regular shopping on Amazon, we get a small, very small kickback from that, that but it helps the channel. It helps us do these giveaways. We're going to be giving one of these fire starters away with some tinder and if you go click on that video or and leave a comment on that video you're automatically entered into the giveaway so go watch that video that's an excellent little product it's um, one of the best fire starters i know some people call it bushcraft or whatever you want to call it i like to carry it for survival i've got one in every rig every backpack so if i'm ever caught in a situation I have the ability to start a fire and help my family. That has been one of the best products I've ever found for that. I've went through a lot of different products over the years. I went through, I think, four different winter survival courses with different ideology about starting fires and so on and so forth. But the last class I took, they showed us those things. And man, I really like that product. So go watch that video, leave a comment, and again, thank you so much for using those affiliate links. It helps the channel and it helps us do these giveaways and buy new gear 
and you know do more things again thank you very much okay that's going to wrap it up for today thanks for watching subscribing giving us a thumbs up once in a while and we hope we'll see you guys on the next video